नमस्ते क्लास वेलकम अगेन नाउ इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल सी अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक कॉल्ड बेस थ्योरम नाउ हियर इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ बेस थ्योरम एंड वी विल सी फ्यू एग्जांपल्स व्हिच कैन बी सॉल्व्ड यूजिंग द बेस थ्योरम लेट अस फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड थ्योरी आई वांट यू टू पेशेंटली go through the theory part first because this is a little complicated concept yes so here we have given a problem and by that we will understand what we will find using the bayes theorem consider that there are two bags one and two bag 1 contain two white ball and three red ball and bag 2 contain four white ball and five red ball one ball is drawn at random from one of the bag we can find the probability of selecting any of the bag half or the probability of drawing a ball of a particular color from a particular bag in other words we can find the probability that the ball drawn is of a particular color if we are given the bag from which the ball is drawn but can we find the probability that the ball drawn is from a particular bag say bag 2 if the color of ball drawn is given here we have to find reverse probability of bag 2 to be selected when an event occurred after it is known famous mathematician john bayes solved the problem of finding reverse of probability by using conditional probability the formula developed by him is known as bayes theorem which was published posthumously in 1763 it is known as bayes theorem which was published uh, before starting and proving the bayes theorem let us first take up a definition and some preliminary results now uh, before we see these results let me discuss this problem again i understand that some of you will have understood what is given and some of you have difficulty in getting this so there are two bags two white three red four white five red so what is given that i have two bag this is suppose bag 1 and this is suppose back to now two red and three black two red ball and three black ball is there here four red and five black is there okay suppose this is a situation given to you then what are the different probabilities that you can find first you can find if you choose a ball then you can find the probability of choosing the ball from bag 1 or bag 2 so probability of choosing bag 1 is half and probability of choosing bag 2 is half yes it is equally likely that you will take one of the bag right so probability of choosing bag you can determine you can find out now the other thing what you can find out is you can find out the probability of drawing a red ball from bag 1 which is 2 upon 5 or probability of drawing a black ball from bag 1 that is 3 upon 5 so this is conditional probability you can say that you know that it is a bag 1 now what is probability of getting a red ball or you know that it is a black ball uh, it is a bag one what is the probability of getting a black ball so this we have done in conditional probability this one is also fine other thing we can find out is probability of getting a red ball okay when it is given that it is back to that is probability of getting a red ball from back to or probability of getting black ball from back to this we can find out now if 
question comes like this that the ball drawn is red ball now tell me what is the possibility that it is drawn from back one okay so what is the scenario that first you will choose one of the bag and then you are going to draw the red ball so your first event is choosing bag one or bag two your second event is drawing the red ball and when first event occurred the probability of second event we have done by conditional probability using conditional probability here what we want to find here we want to find that i have drawn a red ball now tell me the possibility that i have drawn it from the back one okay means the second event i know that what is the second event i have to find the possibility of first event so this is something called reverse of probability and this reverse probability okay how to calculate this reverse probability was developed by this mathematician okay so before we understand the formula how to use it let us understand few more terms so that our base will be strong okay while dealing with problems which are involved base theorems so first we will see partition of sample space now we all know what is sample space sample space is a collection of all possible outcome and when i say partition of sample space means all possible outcomes i am going to divide in some part that is called partition there will be no overlapping means each part will be separate that is each part will be exclusive and all partition taken together form a sample space so all these partitions when i club them what i will get i will get sample space that is they are exhaustive so let us consider a set of event e1 e2 e3 e4 en it is said to represent a partition of sample space s if we give few conditions are there first is that ei intersection ej is null set means nothing is common between them and even union e2 union e3 union e4 like that till union en is equals to sample space means when we take the union of all we get sample space third possibility of each event is greater than 0 for all i is equals to 1 2 3 n so these are the three conditions should be satisfied for events to be considered as partition of sample space one is that um, nothing should be common between them second when i consider all together i will get sample space and possibility of each event should be non negative should be greater than 0 an example we see that as an example we see that any non empty event e and it's a complement e complement form a partition of sample space s since they satisfy that their intersection is null set and their union is sample space so if you take a event and you take the complement of event then event and its complement they also form partitions from the venn diagram figure number 13.3 where is this 13.4 is here 13.3 ah 13.3 from figure number 13.3 what they want to say if i see here this e and complement of e they are going to be considered as partitions let us see what they want to say okay diagram is in our mind so from the venn diagram of a figure number 13.3 one can easily observe that if e and f are any two event associated with a sample space then the set e intersection f complement e intersection f e complement intersection f and e complement intersection f complement 
is the partition of sample space. It may be mentioned that the partition of sample space is not unique. There can be several partitions of sample space. We shall now prove theorems known as theorem of total probability. So, before that, I will draw that uh, figure here. So, here I have two event. One is event E and other is event F. Okay. So, this is E and this is F. Now, what they say? E intersection F complement. Now, this is E and if I leave this F, then rest all is F complement and their intersection, if I check, then their intersection is this part. This part is this part I say that it is E intersection F complement. Then E intersection F. E intersection F this part. This part is E intersection F. Then E complement intersection F. So, again this part. This is E complement intersection F and finally E complement intersection F complement. So, this part which is empty. Okay. So, I will mark like this. This remaining part. This remaining part is E complement intersection F complement. Now, if you see that E intersection F complement, E intersection F, E complement intersection F and E intersection E complement intersection F complement, they can be considered as partition of sample space because they are dividing this sample space in some part in such a way that they are mutually exclusive and they are occupying some space that is probability of getting any of them is greater than 0. So, so far we have understood what is the partition of sample space. Okay. Now, let us discuss the possibility or let us discuss the theorem of total possibility or total probability. Let event E1, E2, En. So, again we have considered the partition of sample space. You can see this diagram. Here we have some events like E1, E2, then we have E3, then we have E4, E5, something like that, En. So, they are forming partition of this sample space. So, let us consider E1, E2, E3, En with a partition of sample space and suppose that each of the event E1, E2, E3, En has non-zero probability of occurrence. Let A be the event associated with sample space then. So, we have first drawn the partition of sample space, then we have defined one event which is an event on the sample space. Then possibility of event A, P of A will be equal to possibility of event E1 into possibility of A by E1. So, this part you understand. This is something called uh, multiplication theorem, right? In multiplication theorem, we have seen that intersection of this E1 and A can be find out like this. So, intersection of E1 and A in this diagram, what is that part? So, we are talking about this small part, okay? If I shade it, so, I am talking about this part. So, this part is, okay, this part is P of E1 means possibility of this part I will say is P of E1 into P of A by E1. The possibility of E1 multiplied by possibility of event A provided event E1 already occurred. So, this part, I am getting this part. 
like that i can find probability of this part probability of uh, then this part in between probability of this part and probability of this part so probability of e1 into probability of a by e1 plus probability of e2 by probability of uh, probability of e2 into probability of a by e2 plus dot 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 in the same way the last is probability of en into probability of a by en and thus i will find probability of a this method of getting the possibility of a is called theorem of total probability so theorem of total probability gives me probability of event okay with respect to partitions of sample space so i will say that probability of a is summation of probability of ej into probability of a by ej where j okay j changes from 1 to n summation of all these things this sum is it clear now they have given proof for this also so let us see the proof also to understand this statement in a better way given that e1 e2 e3 en are the partition of sample space therefore first of all i will say that the sample space is e1 union e2 union e3 union en and the thing is common between them that is ei intersection ej is null set now event a event a can be written as a intersection sample space now intersection of a and sample space is going to be a only you can see in the diagram sample space is complete uh, space what you are seeing e is in between them a shaded portion now if i take intersection of event e and s what i get i get a only so in set theory we have discussed that if a is a subset of s then a intersection s is going to be a only so here we have used that so set theory is very very important while you are discussing probability so a is equals to a intersection s now a intersection s now this s is what s is e1 union e2 union e3 like that so a intersection all these things now i open the bracket and i will get a intersection e1 union a intersection e2 union a intersection e3 and so on union a intersection en and on left hand side what we have we have a also a intersection ei and a intersection ej are respectively the subsets of ei and ej we know that ei and ej are disjoint therefore intersection of a and ei and a and ej are also disjoint for all okay so intersection part na this part if i say this part is different from this part they are disjoint so probability of a now probability of a as the disjoint probability of a can be written as probability of a intersection e1 union a intersection e2 union like that this is equals to probability of a intersection e1 plus probability of a intersection e2 plus probability of a intersection en and so on now by multiplication rule of the probability which we have discussed in the last lecture probability of a intersection e1 can be written as probability of e1 into probability of a by e1 that means probability of a intersection ei is probability of ei into probability of a by ei so using this concept i will write this statement probability of a is probability of e1 into probability of a by e1 plus probability of e2 into probability of a by e2 plus so on so here in this formula what is e1 e2 e3 en they are partitions and what is a a is an event okay so let us first see one example which involves this total probability theorem theorem of total probability okay a person has undertaken a construction job 
okay you have to visualize here okay lot of thing you have to visualize if you can visualize the problem you can visualize the situation then it is easy for you to solve it a person has undertaken a construction job the probabilities are 0.65 that there will be strike and 0.8 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is no strike what what is given the pro probabilities are 0.65 that there will be strike okay so 0.6 percent possibility is that okay, there will be strike so there will not be a strike its possibility will be 1 minus 0.65 which is uh, 0.35 now 0.8 um 0.8 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is no strike and 0.32 that the construction job will be completed on time if there is a strike so 0.8 and 0.32 these are the possibilities of completing a job completing a job 0.8 is the possibility of completing the job when there is no strike and 0.32% 32 is the possibility of completing the job when there is a strike determine the probability that the construction job will be completed on time so in sample space i have two partition one is strike one is non strike and in that sample space i have one event that event of getting job done now there are two possibilities given one the job done when there is a strike one the job done when there is no strike so the situation is something what we have discussed just now so here we will consider event a the construction job will be completed on time and b be the event that there will be a strike now we have to find the possibility of a we have to find possibility of a now let us see what are different numbers given here what they represent okay so first 0.65 what it represent it represents the possibility of strike so i will say that possibility of b b is the event that there will be strike the possibility of b is 0.65 and possibility of b complement that is there is no strike is 1 minus possibility of b that is 0.35 possibility of a by b means possibility of getting job done when there is a strike is 0.32 and possibility of getting job done when there is no strike is 0.8 so these are the things given and we have to find possibility of a so what we can say using this total probability theorem we can say that this possibility of a will be possibility of b into possibility of a by b plus possibility of b complement into possibility of a by b complement okay this is what we discussed in this total probability theorem and we have all these values so put these values and this 0.488 so this 0.488 is the possibility of getting job done okay so the probability that the construction job will be completed in time is 0.488 okay so this is one part this is one part which you have to understand that the theorem of total probability the theorem of total probability you have to understand partitions first okay so always whenever there is a problem okay you identify if the partitions of sample space are given or not so if the partitions of sample space you identify then easily you can apply this theorem of total probability or you can apply the base theorem which we will see okay now base theorem let us come to the base theorem so this uh, theorem of total probability uh, is the um, ground we are preparing for this base theorem okay now if e1 e2 e3 en they are non empty event which construct the partition of sample space that is we can say that this e1 e2 e3 en they are pair wise disjoint 
that is joint and their union is simple space and a is event of non zero probability so again keep in mind this picture that this is a sample space and we have partitions of the sample space say like this we have some partitions 1 2 3 4 5 five partitions you can have two partition you can have four partitions you can have 10 partition and then we have some event in the sample space okay the possibility of these event in different partitions we know so this is something a uh, given situation we have to find the possibility of this event a that we can do using this total probability theorem now using bayes theorem what we can do using bayes theorem we can find the possibility of any particular partition okay when it is known that this event has occurred okay when it is known that this event has occurred then what is the possibility that it has occurred on this partition e1 or e2 that we are going to see using bayes theorem so the statement of bayes theorem is possibility of event ei okay suppose e1 i will say possibility of getting partition e1 provided event a has occurred will be equal to probability of this e1 into probability of a by e1 probability of a by e1 is this part whole divided by summation of probability of ej into probability of a by ej okay now this denominator part is this denominator part is nothing but this total probability theorem and this is what probability of a so let us discuss by formula by formula of conditional probability when i say that ei by a it means possibility of a intersection ei so a intersection ei is this part shaded part upon possibility of a now possibility of a intersection ei using the multiplication theorem we can say that possibility of ei into possibility of a by ei and whole divided by possibility of a now this possibility of a is by using theorem of total probability we can say that summation of probability of ej into probability of a by ej so when we know this total probability theorem when we know this, this multiplication theorem then it is easy to understand this bayes theorem so possibility of ei by a is equals to possibility of ei into possibility of a by ei divided by summation of possibility of ej into possibility of a by ej the following terminologies is generally used when bayes theorem is applied so what are different terms we use okay this is not uh, that much important for you all but keep in mind okay theory part nowadays multiple choice questions are coming so in those questions they can ask something related with this the event e1 e2 e3 en are called hypothesis the probability pei is called priori probability of the hypothesis ei the conditional probability p of ei by a is called posteriori probability of the hypothesis so what is probability of ei it is called priori probability okay because your partition you will understand first then if second part is happened that is a happened then what is the possibility of event ei it is called posteriori probability the bayes theorem is also called formula for probability of causes since the ei are the partitions of sample space one and only one event ei occurs that is one of the event ei must occur and only one can occur hence the above formula gives us the probability of a particular ei cause given that event a has occurred so out of e1 e2 e3 only one can occur na because they are all disjoint so only one can occur simultaneously two events cannot occur e1 e2 like that now when i know the event a has occurred then what is the cause for that event a 
that is which partition is involved there probability of that event is find out using bayes theorem so the bayes theorem has its application in variety of situations uh, that we can understand when we see few examples so i will discuss one example here and then few more examples we discuss in our next class now first uh, let us see this example number 16 so this example will help us to understand this concept in a better way so bag one contain again we have taken the same problem which we discussed in the beginning okay a bag one bag one contains three red four black ball while bag two contain five red and six black ball one ball is drawn at random from one of the bag and it is found to be red find the probability that it was drawn from bag two okay so um, we have chosen one bag and we have drawn one ball and that ball come out to be red we have to find the possibility that we have drawn this red ball from bag two okay so first you have to understand what is the partitions involved here so let e1 and e2 the event of choosing bag 1 and choosing bag 2 they are partition of sample space okay you can choose any one of the bag and possibility of e1 e2 is half choosing any of the bag is 50% now when you choose bag 1 then possibility of getting a red ball that is possibility of a when e1 is given so drawing a red ball from bag 1 it is 3 by 7 and the same way possibility of getting red ball from bag 2 it is 5 by 11 total 5 plus 6 11 balls are there and 5 red balls are there in back two so these are the informations given in problem we have given possibility of e1 possibility of e2 we have given possibility of a okay given e1 possibility of a given e2 now we have to find possibility of event e2 given a okay we have to find the possibility of choosing back two when we know that it is a red ball so we use base theorem now the probability of drawing a ball from back to being given that it is red is possibility of e2 by a now using base theorem we can say that possibility of e2 by a is possibility of e2 now you can remember this formula na? when i am saying possibility of e2 by a so first what i am writing i am writing possibility of e2 then possibility of a by e2 okay so from here you have to write first possibility of e2 then possibility of a by e2 means you have to reverse this divide by okay whatever different uh, partitions you have so two partitions i have so for two partitions um, i will write possibility of e1 now this subscript e2 okay i will write e1 into possibility of a by e1 plus possibility of e2 into possibility of a by e2 so the same term you can see here okay so this is formula you put all the values which you have got and you will get the possibility so possibility of e2 by a is 35 divided by 68 okay so i hope you have understand it okay maybe you have to revise this topic again okay so i suggest that key yes revise it once more and then see different examples and then again revise this concept once more and then start solving the exercise and while you are solving exercise i recommend that solve each and every problem by yourself without looking at the solution and then you can cross verify using the solution so thank you thank you for being with me in this lecture in the next lecture we will discuss all the examples which are given here and then we will see problems from the exercise thank you thank you once again for being with me